to new territory by opening their own restaurant. Nice to see you, Bill. Thank you for inviting me. Welcome Thanks to Alaya. Yeah, well, I got one question, though. You guys got the world on the string, you know, fame growing every year. Why in heaven's name do you want to get involved in the restaurant business? In New York City, yeah, too. York. The, riskiest, the riskiest town of all for the restaurant business. How come? Well, you know, we figured we conquered the movie business, which is the second most risky <laughs> industry. We might as well go after the riskiest of them all, the restaurant industry in New York City. <laughs> Plus, we like to eat. Yeah, we, we, we don't, neither of us cook. We don't know how to cook good food, but we know what good food tastes like. So we figure if we're going to be sinking all this money continuously into all these restaurants in New York, it might as well be our own. You know? Yeah, save wear and tear on your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to see the place. Let's sure, go. please. All right. Right this way, gentlemen. Right this way. After you. You know what? You could always be a beautiful doorman. <laughs> doorman, bouncer, bartender, not at all. To a lion. Right on. Right. And Which, thanks by for the coming. way, is your daughter's name. It's named, named after my six-year-old daughter. The right. bottom line is the neat thing about the restaurant, first and foremost, is the food, is, is the reason people are complimenting the restaurant more than anything else. The key ingredient, pun intended, also being uh, Matthew Scully, our, our chef, who is Phenomenal, excellent. has an excellent reputation uh, here in New York with uh, some of the places that he's worked with through the course of his career. And he really is sort of the, uh, again, pun intended, sort of the star uh, of what we have going on here. Number two is the room itself. Uh, mm -hmm. What we've done with the design and the artwork and the lighting and the mood and the atmosphere, people are really enjoying having a meal and then hanging out afterwards. They like the vibe here very much. Right. And late nights from 10, 30, 11, it goes through this transformation from a nice, uh -huh. elegant dining experience into sort of a happening bar scene a little bit. You know, because like, it's totally different thing. Yeah, right yeah exactly. And, and both are, are really rocking at this point. We're happy, pleased to report. Good. <laughs> is the report is good? So is far, so good. Well, uh, why don't we have an elegant dining experience? Right on. Fantastic. All right. Okay. What have, you, what have you been served there? Is it the mystery I've dish. I've been served mussels in a clay pot, which is absolutely delicious. One of my favorite things about it is that it's very Simple, steamed, very clean, very yeah. healthy. I'm, I'm a huge shellfish fan, and I loved, I love steamed mussels. So I'll let you know how it goes. Well, good. Give it a shot. I've got the, uh, the grilled octopus, oh, which is a dish that I really you like. You have to have one of these. I'll try it. You have to have one of these. How about you, Steve? Like butter. <laughs> <laughs> these are simply yufka duck rolls. Yufka, mm -hmm. I can't figure out yet. It must have something to do with the flavor because it's got a Yufka flavor. It's got, from the Yufka you got a big bite there, my the friend. Former Soviet Union, I believe. This is a this is the Barney Rubble rehearsal bite. <laughs> Go, do it. Ooh. No, I just like to hear a little bit about the creation story. I mean, you're four brothers. You have two sisters growing up in Massapequa, Long Island. The Baldwin brothers are an acting quartet, a dynasty. How did it happen? I mean, is this a plot when you were all teenagers to take over Hollywood? What, what's, what gives? You know, everybody asks me that question. I never really have the right answer for it. I don't know how we all... I, who, I think... Who started? So Alec? My brother Alec and then Stephen was soon to follow. Because Stephen was the only one that really did it uh, on, on, a, on a serious level through the latter elementary school years and through junior high school and into, into high school. He had a really serious commitment with choir and, right. and, and the drama club. So Alec went in professionally, he was soon to follow, and I think Daniel and I were just standing around thinking, you know, what are we going to be when we grow up? I'm still, I still ask myself that question, actually. And I, I think it was, it really was hell if, if he could do it, I could do it, you yeah. know. How are we doing? You finished. You finished the duck? You guys, it was, I was loving it. You guys were like rapping back and forth, and I'm so going, mm -hmm, you know, beneath the 12 mile reef. I'm going to look like that. a little piglet here. Uh, no, that's but, all right. uh, why don't we uh, take the a slight pause good. in the back of the island? City. One of the restaurant's most impressive features are its original paintings by a friend of Stevens, 13-year-old Russian artist Alexandra Nikita. But the culinary artist at Alaya is executive chef Matthew Scully. And Matthew showed us how to create his specialty, lemon-crusted yellowfin tuna. Now the first step to the dish that we're preparing today is to make the crusting for the tuna. We're using cracked coriander seeds, cracked black peppercorn, Japanese breadcrumb, and lemon zest. All we want to do is just combine those. We're going to add a pinch of salt, and we have one ready here to go. And we simply roll our tuna in the crust, 
The tuna is quickly seared on all four sides and then placed in the oven for one minute. Matthew slices the tuna, plates it with coconut basmati rice and Japanese eggplant, and then dresses a dish with a lobster curry sauce. And the final garnish to the dish is a little julienne scallion and some grilled green onions, chives. And I've got the yellowfin tuna dish. Billy has a orecchietti with broccoli rabe, and Stephen's sure. choice is a Chilean sea bass. I'd like to hear the story about how each of you met your wives. You um, met your wife where? I met my wife on the Crosstown 79th Street bus in New York City. I was a hoodlum. I walked up to her. Working at Mama's Pizza. Working at Mama's Pizza, delivering pizza. Our first date was on a pizza delivery. Our first kiss was on an elevator while balancing a pizza on a delivery. Pizza uh, playing a significant part in your life. She says to this date the kiss you was pretty good. romantic. <laughs> yeah, right. I think she kind of liked me because I was a little bit of a slob. Put me on that bus, though. How, did you just say right. hi? How did you meet, you know? I had I'm... kind of uh, <clears throat> like half of my head shaved and one side of my head really long hair. Was this for a part? Military, no. Oh. A military tre trench coat, combat boots, bad attitude. Uh, cross yeah. between Sean Penn and Sid Vicious, and uh, <clears throat> but those blue eyes were shining through, weren't they? Yeah, man. And so I went up to her. I said, "This lady is uh, very well dressed. She had a portfolio, seemingly very nice. I had to mess with her, see what she was made of." I said, "So, uh, what are you doing there, sister?" And she said, "Oh, I'm just on my way to Parsons. I'm a student." And I died. So I said, uh, "Excuse me, you're coming with me forever." Billy Baldwin's married to singer China Phillips, and he proposed to her in grand style. I took this, this suite in the Carlisle Hotel, and I, um, I, if you can believe this, I miraculously, uh, thanks to the, the generous generosity and kindness of Vera Wang, I put uh, about 80 wedding dresses all throughout the uh, suite over the piano, and there was picture molding all the way around the room, and I just. There were so many dresses left over that we had the, um, the clothing carts. And there was this one wall, this one sort of ugly wall with mirrors. And I covered the, the mirrored wall with these, these clothing carts that had like another 20 dresses on it. Unbelievable. And we put in, Robert Isabel did all the candles and the flowers. And we, the place was just exploding with candles and flowers and wedding dresses. And she thought we were going to a, a Christmas party at the Carlisle. And when she walked in, it didn't take her long to figure out what was happening. Ooh. And uh, it was fun. We spent the next three days in the Carlisle ordering room, room service, service and celebrating and trying on uh, wedding dresses. It's actually an interesting story. When I was up there... You're a romantic man. Thank you. Thank you. When I was up there, she knew we decided to get married, but I said, don't tell everyone we've decided to get married because they'll confuse that with I've proposed and we're engaged and I want to save that for me. We had a discussion where we had made the decision. We're definitely going to do it, but I said, I don't know if I'm going to propose next week or next month or in a few months. I don't know. So she went and thought, he's going to have an engagement ring for me. I'd like to have a gift sure. for him there. So four months later, I proposed to her. She's forgotten. She bought the gift, gave it to someone that she knew would know. She said, when, you're going to know when, Billy, when this whole thing goes down, you're going to know when and where. Make sure that you give this to him. So that this card comes up with caviar and champagne and everything. And on the card is this gift. And it says, for Billy. It doesn't say Billy in China. It says, for Billy. I thought like the hotel sent uh -huh. me some gift or something. I opened it up and it's a note from China. I looked at her, oh, honey, you're so, you little devil, you. <laughs> and she was, she was like, what? What is it? And when I opened it up and she realized what it was, she'd forgotten. She had purchased this like five months <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Forgot. <clears throat> and she bought me this Let's watch. See. Look, read the back. Oh, that, that, I have a lump. It's yes, with a big exclamation point. In, in capital letters. Whoa, what a wonderful thing. Yeah. Isn't that great? Can I have this? <laughs> you can borrow it. <laughs> That's she wonderful. Had this for me she said, "Look at the back. Look at the back." And it said, "Yes" in, in giant letters. It was it was great. Uh, it's it's such a pleasure to be sitting here with two happily married guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, here you are, macho, handsome movie stars. A, a thing that guys talk about all the time, in the long run, is when they know they're going to get married. Is a question of fidelity. Mm -hmm. Does it ever? How do you deal with not being faithful, because you're obviously happy, I, this is, but just that long-term question of just being with one person for the rest of your life? Something guys talk about all the time. So definitely something that, that you think about. Yeah. Because if you sort of, I, I think for, well, 
You ever I see love it being to see difficult? Couples, I love to see couples walking down the beach that are like 75 years old and they're still together and they're still happy and they still communicate and they still sleep in the same bed and they still make love with one another. But even that couple, I'm sure the husband and the wife both, not just the man, the woman. A long journey. If you look at it like one day it's not a problem, one week it's not a problem, one year it's not a problem. If you project 30 years down the road, that, that's you're the like, answer. boy, oh boy. Let me just go back to taking it one day at a time. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. If mm. you're in a great relationship, then it's not uh, it's not as yeah. difficult if as the you magic's think. there. Then usually there shouldn't be a problem. So long as uh, let's put it this way, I'll never forget. This is uh, funny. We're talking about somebody. No, but somebody came to me recently and said, you know, oh well, you know, this friend of mine's in a relationship problem, and you know, this guy is being pursued by another woman, and the wife doesn't know what to do. And I said. I don't get it. My wife would walk up and deck the broad. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, that's so, so that's part of how she keeps me interested. You know what I mean? She keeps me in line. She kicks me in the butt, and uh, and I love it. Stephen, I have to ask you about something that you have done that I would never do. It has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. Mm. Bungee jumping. Sure. You would have to. I don't know what kind of drug-induced state I would have to be in no to way. jump off a cliff with something tied to my ankle and go down. Why bungee jump? Tell me about it. Uh, well, I just think that there's a certain sense of uh, complete and total non-control mm -hmm. that I kind of like. That, uh, you know, when you're, when the, when there's, like, I've skydived before and all yeah. that, and you're seeing the ground, and you kind of space out, and then you pull the chute, and it's all fun. But when you bungee jump, after the first recoil, you're flipping all over the place, and, you know, the whole sky and the ground and a bird and a plane and a car. You're out it's of like control. it's all whipping around you pretty quickly and it's kind of a rush for me. Let's talk a little bit about Barney Rubble. You're doing the prequel to the Flintstones and I, you're playing Barney Rubble. I am Barney Rubble. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had costume fittings for this yet? Uh, let me just say, I was called in Viva Rock Vegas <laughs> is the name of the prequel. Viva Rock Vegas. Seriously? Be, yeah, Viva Rock Vegas. Mark Addy, the bigger fellow from the Full Monty is Fred. <clears throat> right. I'm Barney. Uh, Kristen Johnson from the series Third Rock is, yeah. is Wilma, and she Jane is Kukowski, brilliant. Jane Kukowski from uh, Kristen Johnson, uh, Ali McBeal mm -hmm. is uh, Betty. I'm in doing a makeup test the other day, and I take my shirt off, and I have 14 tattoos. Yeah, no, you so you got a couple right here. Yeah, I got a couple right here. So they do this new process where they're they're painting me with this spray gun to cover up the tattoos, and they're <laughs> like, "So Steve, can we talk about the tattoos?" And I said, "Well, you know, guys." I really started out thinking Mickey Rourke, you know what I mean? I had this macho kind of thing, Night. bad boy kind of thing. Didn't know I was headed for bedrock, guys. You were Didn't see it coming, you know? <laughs> had no idea the Flintstones was going to be in my future. You have 14 tattoos, think of getting more? By the way, I got the, first, I got the first tattoo, this one tattoo on my ankle. He saw it and said, I love that tattoo, I'm going to get it. He got it two weeks later. Six months later, he had about 11. Yeah. Any more? And that was about 15 years in ago. In store? I just recently got uh, uh, a couple of new ones. Here's, here's the latest one I just got, dedicated to my children. There you go. Daddy. There you go. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Mighty nice. Does it hurt? I never had a tattoo, and nor do I plan to get you're one. You're going bungee jumping, you're getting a tat, you're going to do it all about This man's going to change my life. I mean, I think it's, <laughs> it's going to happen pretty simply, just, just like We're that. We're going to change the, the entire nature of your show. Hey, speaking of changing, do you think, I, I want a really quick answer on this. Do you think your brother, Alec Baldwin, will ever run for political office? No theories, yes or no? What do you think? It's hard to answer. Yes. I think, yes. I think, yes. I think there's definitely uh, a, a strong possibility. But, but let me just uh, clarify that. I, it's hard. I knew it's, I could get a yes. You're such a politician. No, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. <laughs> when, you're, when you're working with Woody Allen yeah. and Rob Reiner, and Anthony Hopkins, and you're really at the pinnacle. Whether, whether, you know, I mean, he's doing, even when his movies don't turn out that way, it's, it's, it's The Edge with Anthony Hopkins and David Mamet. Right. Great action-adventure film. And you're also, you're at the pinnacle of your business, and you're, and you're also making tons of money. It's, it's not an easy thing to w walk away from. I think right. it was easier for Senator Fred Thompson to walk away, yeah. or even Ronald Reagan to walk away, because they never had the career my career My brother is nominated for Tony's. His wife is winning Oscars. He's in Glen Gary, Glen Ross. It's, it's not going to be easy for him to walk away from that. No. Not gonna but be the easy. answer is yes. Down, down the road. Yeah. Much further down the road. Let's, let's put in reverse and go back down the road to when you were in high school. You were an excellent opera singer. Mm -hmm. I was uh, started out as a choral singer. It progressed into... Italian opera? I progressed into all-state soloist guy for the all-state competitions. 
and then I toured with the Long Island Philharmonic doing uh, a Leonard Bernstein piece called the Chichester Psalms. Mm. And then I was going to be given the opportunity to pursue it seriously, Juilliard and all that, and I just said, no, I want tattoos. I, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hey, there's Bungee no, cord and a tattoo, that's, you know. There's nothing better to get me in the mood for dessert than a tiny bit of your voice singing something. Oh. Just a moment. Oh, it's been 20 years. Watch this, watch this. I'll even show you how. You want to put a little distance I can in that work mic? The mic bit. You want to keep that there? And I'll, I'll use this mine. From Celine Dion. This could be your. This could be your Vegas act. Are you going to punch <coughs> your chest like Celine? No. no, no. <laughs> no? Let me okay. see. Do I have this thing right? What should I do? I'm going to do the. She's Ave retiring. Maria. So. Yeah, Ave Maria. Ave Maria. That's all you get, folks. That's all we need. Thank you. Thank you. Owners, William and Stephen Baldwin. Desserts. But yours is disappearing fast. <laughs> Again. What Again. is it about this Look cake? at this thing. Come in. In, in 30 seconds, <laughs> the chocolate decadence cake is Billy had some. He always what? blamed it on his big brother. Yeah, he does blame it on the big brother, right? And I've got this is a terrific uh, pear tart. Um, that is what, a fig flan? This, this is, no, this is a, 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 fig, a figamajiggy. Yeah. Uh, a <laughs> figamajig. And it has beautiful, it's, it's uh, a fig sort of pastry with, with, with delicious homemade uh, lemon sorbet on top. Mm, I have some of that lemon sorbet right here. I love a dessert. Hey, what was the, the, your favorite dessert that your mother made back in Massapequa? Wow. Strawberry rhubarb. Pie or just plain pie. strawberry pie. rhubarb pie? Carol Baldwin made a vicious rack of brownies. <laughs> you know, she made this stuff that was famous for miles around. She made these two things. One was called love cookies, and for another was love called, handles. Yeah. No, because it was so delicious. It tasted so good that it was better than love. love it was better cookie. than making love. I see where this romance. It was love goes. cookies and love pie. And if you had a taste of this love pie, you'd know what I was talking mm -hmm. about. So you had happy, happy times at dessert in your family, right? Yeah, my mother, more than anything, she was a phenomenal cook, but uh, she was, uh, her real strength was as a baker, incredible baker mm. to this day. But I, I want to talk to you a little bit about your sobriety. I mean, for ten, you obviously had a problem with booze, and for 10 years you haven't had a drink. Um, what do you say to somebody who knows they have a problem, but they don't think they could do what you've done, which is just stop? For me, it just takes making a daily decision and choosing not to do that. One, one day at a time, one literally. Day, one literally day one day at a time. But at the same time, you know, there's different philosophies. People have this uh, perception that you have to be in the gutter and this and that, and, you know, and there's been lots of philosophies about sobriety, about having to hit a bottom and lose everything, yeah. and lose all your money and lose your wife. And, you know, times have changed and that doesn't have to happen. You know, uh, you know drug and alcohol abuse is, is an elevator that only goes in one direction and, and you can get off at any floor. Just make the decision and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. That's good advice. Now, what about the family values that you had? I mean, I want to go back to the six children, the school teacher's salary. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that you learn from your parents must still be guiding you very directly at this point in your life. Would you not say? Absolutely. Totally. I mean, you're a product of your environment. I mean, the, 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 I really wake up, you know, not every day, but many times during the week, I really, uh, count my blessings for having two parents that really fought hard to instill the proper values in us. And like what, for example? I'd say the three major variables that were instilled in us were, were academics and to grow and evolve through knowledge and, uh, and athletics. My father was a high school football yeah. coach and stuff and little league coach. Yeah. And uh, service, those were the three things that come to my mind first. Well, I'd like to close, in fact, we do close each show with a toast from, from our guests to our Food Network viewers. And uh, either one can have the honor of a toast or both. William? To Aliyah and to the viewers of the Food Network. Thanks for joining us. Please come in and enjoy Mr. Scully's delicious food. We'd love to have you come down. It's getting busy. And if you have a problem calling and getting a reservation, I'd like you to call my brother Steve. He'll <laughs> straighten it all out for you. There'll be no problem. We'll take no care problem. of your own personal dining reservations, the whole experience. Health and happiness. I'll drink to that. Thank you. <laughs> Health and happiness. Salut. Thank you, gentlemen. Right. Let's go to McKenna Junior High School, eighth grade. Your girlfriend, Randy. You and Randy were expelled from school 
for, quote, necking and caressing in the hallway. Make uh, it up. Back in the day, you, <laughs> can, see, you can see now that, uh, what, what do you want me to say? I mean, two do, and two equals four, guys. I'm a, I'm a kid, she's gorgeous. You know, I see a neck, I smell it, I bite it. You know, what do you want me to say? <laughs> <And> <laughs>